Great. Yeah, no, any, anything you say is what, what, is what you say. So anything that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wanted to get your answer. Thank you. Um, okay, so then let's get Barat in, uh, then Simon, and then we'll move on to the next uh, article. Go ahead, yeah. Barat. Uh, hello, Glenn. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm amazed at your idealism and comprehensive sense of seeing a humanity's future. Uh, I applaud you for that. But I have a couple questions that concern me. One is uh, seeing the nature of human beings as it has evolved over the centuries, the kinds of mistrust we have. We saw a lot of that in this trial that's taking place in Washington, D.C., where even another person's word is like seen as, uh, you know, uh, a, a total anathema. So right, right. it seems to me that in order to uh, actualize the uh, conception of the world constitution, there needs to be some steps that'll have to be taken. And my feeling is uh, perhaps it has to begin with not our generation. I don't know if we are capable in to, to really transform ourselves to behave like that, uh, but maybe the generations, young generation to be born and maybe the very young one. To, and it seems all cultures have evolved because of education with being a key to that. So the question I have is, is there a kind of an educational plan that begins right at the point of conception or infinity, <laughs> it, it, you know, in yeah. fancy, I mean, that we evolve. Yeah. So that, and so now the final question is, when do you see this become real? Is there any kind of a sense of a timeline for this? Anyway, that's- Those are, yeah, Vara, thank you for those questions. They're, they're huge questions, just like every question that, that people have asked up till now is huge. It, it, you know, it isn't just, Article One, right? These are huge <laughs> questions, and and, uh, and uh, um, I uh, there is a movement, as as you all may know, uh, uh, having to do with uh, there's there's a whole group called uh, evolutionary leaders, right? And there's a and uh, we just had a, a Zoom meeting with them uh, Wednesday, and some of them and. Uh, and so the, they they go by this thing called spiral dynamics or Ken Wilber's stages of moral and spiritual development, and and there's a lot I've written on this, and I and I include this in my forthcoming book, and I also include it in my last book, uh, um, Global Democracy and Human Self Transcendence. Right, that's the the name of that. You know, human self transcendence. I think we're capable of this kind of self transcendence. And, and so there are stages when we're young, we're egoistic, right? And, and as we develop and get acculturated, we become, they, in these stages, we, we become ethnocentric, right? Uh, we think somehow that what we grew up in somehow is common sense. But then as we grow, we begin to realize that people around the world look at things differently than we do. And uh, we become world centric, right? And are, are um, and you know, respectful and tolerant, like the world, uh, um, the World Parliament of Religions. Uh, you know, we embrace one another and engage in dialogue and so on. But there's another level that Ken Wilber and these thinkers talk about, and that they call it cosmocentric, right? That there are spiritual levels and human beings are destined to be moving in through these spiritual levels and so there you know the question becomes how can we activate a spiritual renaissance for humanity right that i mean it's possible we if we look in history we see that realizations here and there have taken place suddenly the Renaissance, for example, you know, suddenly everybody was thinking differently in the Renaissance, 15th century Italy. And, and uh, so we think, some people think, I think, that we're on the verge of another Renaissance. 
that global consciousness, the environmentalists are all saying, unless we have global consciousness, we're not going to have a future on this planet. Uh, we, we have to be aware that the biosphere is, you know, we're absolutely dependent upon it. And right now we're destroying it. And so global consciousness, biosphere consciousness, uh, holistic consciousness, these are things that are happening in us. There's a kind of growth process. And in, in, in my, this is the final point I want to make here. In my argument, the Constitution is not simply an end of uh, a goal where uh, where spiritually awakened people have to uh, will be uh, how they'll be living, but it's also a means because insofar as we talk about this, as we promote it, as we uh, interact with people about it, uh, people are looking at it and just the thinking about it, just the, the looking at the design, just thinking about how human life could really be differently is, is, is a spiritual catalyst to help people become world centric. Anyway, that's <laughs> in a short form, that's my, my uh, argument there. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. I'm gonna get Simon in and then Arthur, but let me, since about three or four people joined us after we started and I laid out the guidelines, I just wanna repeat for those who haven't heard, um, first, please be brief in your question or comment. Secondly, if you're promoting something like a book you wrote, an organization you have, a program you give, please save that till the end and don't do the promotion during the Q&A period. There will be time at the end. Um, thank you. Simon, you got it. Um, again, thank you, everyone. Uh, Glenn, also. Uh, the uh, question I have, uh, Glenn, is the following. Um, we have had this federalism since 1947, and uh, Citizens for Global Society, that's, you know, 74 uh, years now this year. However, in 1949, two years after that, arose the European Union idea, 1949, and they immediately embraced it. And most of these ideas about holism are incorporated in the, world, in the European Union rather than European federalism. You know, yes. our country, our yes. USA is federal, but you see what the problems we have here in federalism. But yeah. the union created the peace for 72 years since 49. <laughs> they are living with uh, free healthcare, free, uh, you know, uh, education up to the uh, PhD level. You know, they are doing all these things in practice for 72 yes. years. So yes. why not start maybe like a world union? That I have, is my idea, where somebody can exit if they don't like it, like Britain exited. Because what happened, as you know, because the, it, the world was not, was not like the European Union, the refugees came and missed it up, mixed, mixed it up, you know, but, uh, gave trouble to the European Union. And so they are, they are in trouble now because the world is not like them. Uh, and these not like them world came and interfered with them and be, began to spoil them. So if we could have a world union, uh, then maybe uh, this could be put into practice like the extension of the European Union, which is my idea, which worked uh -huh. until yeah. we go to the federal system, if we want, because the federal you can't get out. The World Union, you can get out if you don't like it. Like yeah, yeah, actually, the the uh, um, uh, the Constitution. We'll see when next time when we look at the rest of it. It it does make provision for people out, being outside it. Right, they can get out. Right, that once once you're you're committed to the federal, you can't you don't get out. But but as as individuals as groups, they can move outside it makes uh, it, it says reserving i believe 10 percent of the world's uh um good land or whatever for for people who don't want to be part of the federation uh but but nevertheless um, in my view uh it, it, to most people it'll be self-evident that they want to be part of the federation right just as you were saying about the european union you know, how nice to live in Denmark or, or you know, um, those other nations where, where you have healthcare and decent wages and 
a, a, a peaceful social environment and so on. That's what we need for the world, right? And, and once people see that the Earth Constitution will realize that for the world, it'll get rid of the terrible global south of poverty exploited by global banking uh, in favor of the global north. All of that will be gone, right? And we'll have a decent global civilization and who's, who's, you know, maybe a few people will want to escape it, but uh, most people will say, this is wonderful, right? We don't want, you know, we, we, we like this. It makes possible a decent life for everybody. So anyway, that's my thought on that. Um, uh, but uh, as, uh, as I was saying uh, before, uh, Simon, uh, you know, this is a blueprint that right now is considered final. You know, it isn't like... Uh, you know, a draft, we're trying to get it ratified because if it was a draft, you couldn't ratify it under Article 17, right? Because you got to have a, you know, a concrete document that you're gonna, if you're going to have voting and ratification. So this is the concrete document. If it needs modification, that can be done after ratification, as I was saying before. What is ratification? Hey, thank you, Glenn. Who's involved with ratification? Who is involved in the world? Well, well, we'll look at that with Article 17, okay. right? Uh, um, today, we're all doing only doing up to Article 9. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you.